فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم من عمل بالتوحيد he works according to توحيد ولم يعرف قدره but he doesn't know the status of the توحيد ولم يبغض من تركه and he doesn't have hate towards those who left توحيد ولم يكفرهم and he doesn't label them as disbelievers this is the worst of them all for him Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab man amila bit tawheed the person is in accordance to tawheed walam ya'arif qadrah but he doesn't know the status of the tawheed walam yubghid man tarakaw and he doesn't hate those who are leaving it walam yukafirhum and he doesn't place kufr over them and then he said waminhum man taraka shirka wa kariha walam ya'arif qadrah and also from those who are the worstest is what? the one who left shirk he hate he hates shirk. But he doesn't know the weight and the seriousness of shirk. My beloved brothers and sisters, what you have to really understand is that Tawheed and following desires are in, they are in opposite, I mean they are in direct opposition. Pay attention. Tawheed and following your desires, my beloved brothers and sisters, they are in total, I mean, direct opposition. They are opposing each other. Tawheed and ittiba'ul hawa. Because following your desires is an idol. It's a sanam. Desires is a sanam. It's an idol. And every single body who follows his desires, he has a portion of that idol in his heart. Naam. And messengers were sent to what? To destroy that idol in your heart. And the worshipping of that idol. Islam didn't just come to destroy the idol as a figure and as an object. What is that going to benefit if this sanam is in the hearts of those people? Islam came to destroy both of them. First and mainly what's in the hearts of those people and the things that they are believing, the idol that's in the chest of those people. وَلِذَلِكَ الْحَسَنْ إِبْنُ عَلِي الْمَطْعُوِي أم الْمَطْعُوِي He said صَدَمُ كُلُّ إِنسَانٍ هَوَاهِ Every person's idol So everybody who follows their desires has an idol in, their, in them. Um, the idol of every person who follows Kullu insani hawa Every person's desires is, a, is his idol It's an idol Every person who is following his desires He's got with him an idol in him فَمَنْ كَسَرَهُ Anyone who destroys that idol بِالْمُخَالَفَةِ Anyone who opposes Who destroys it by opposing it He is the one who deserves to become a what? A person of a tawheed, a person who has left, who has left disbelief. And that's exactly, that's exactly what Allah said in the Quran. His desires is his Lord. He worships it. Allah mentions that subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this qa'idah, what do we learn? What we learn from this qa'idah is هِيَ الْبِدَايَةِ بِالدَّعْوَةِ وَالْأَوْلَوِيَاتِ فِي الدَّعْوَةِ الْبِدَايَةِ بِالدَّعْوَةِ The beginning of da'wah and the first thing that da'wah has to be focused on and the obligatory thing for the person to give importance to is what? أَنْ يُرَكِّزَ عَلَى التَّوْحِيدِ Give importance to tawheed وَعَلَى التَّحَذِيرِ النَّاسِ مِنَ الشِّرْكِ الْأَكْبَرِ And also to give importance to what? Warning the people from shirk. The great shirk akbar and also shirk asghar. And also warning the people from what? Whatever's going to harm their aqeedah. And that could cause harm to their belief. Then and after you've done that, you then go towards 
islah baqiyati umuri deen you then step out to and you direct yourself towards perfecting other matters of the religion because now you have placed a strong foundation in the people which everything else can be built, be built on if a person has desires that you've just been fighting against it by bringing tawheed into their heart and what did I just say to you desires is the total opposite of what? of a tawheed a person who's filled with desires can you get anywhere with them? you won't so there's no point you talking to them about other matters of the religion, good manners, or talking to the sister about hijab, or talking to the brother about the beard and his garment being above his ankles. This man has got a khalal and a weakness in his, in his tawheed. And his weakness in the person's what? In the person's aqeedah. Now some people may come and say, Ya akhi, the people you're talking to are Muslims. Why are you talking to them about tawheed and aqeedah? Haven't they said la ilaha illallah? Haven't they entered into the religion? Why are you going to talk to them about Tawheed al-Aqeedah? We will say this is from the angle of what? Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, aminu. Allah said, oh those of you who believe, believe. Those of you who believe, believe. They've already got Iman and they are still told to come with what? They are still told to come with Iman. And what does that mean? The Iman that they're told to come with here is to strengthen their Iman. And to make it even more powerful because how our desires will creep into any one of us and when it does creep into us then this as I said before is something that's going to cause deficiency to our Tawheed so studying Tawheed learning it will strengthen us so even if the person knows Tawheed and he's a Muwahid he shouldn't get his give up uh, stay away from or turn away from studying it and learning it Al-Qa'idah to Sadisa, the sixth Qa'idah. Al-Qa'idah to Sadisa, the sixth Qa'idah. The sixth Qa'idah is Annahum Yabda'una that they start with Da'watuhum. They start their Da'wa with Bima Bada Allahu Bihi wa Rasuluhu. They start their Da'wa with that which Allah started with and that which the messenger started with فَيُقَدِّمُونَ مَا قَدَّمَهُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ they put forward that which Allah and his messenger had put forward وَيُؤَخِرُونَ and they delay مَا أَخَرَهُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ that which Allah and his messenger delayed وَبِهَادَ يُمْكِنُ تَحْصِيلُ الْمَصَالِحِ and through that one will be possible one will be able to attain benefits وَدَرْءِ الْمَفَاسِدِ and to repel evil by doing that one will be able to bring about good and be able to repel evil why how can a person bring about masalih and repel mafasid is by starting with that which Allah and his messenger started with by putting forward that which Allah and his messenger put forward by delaying that which Allah and His Messenger delayed. Then and only then are you going to be able to what? To bring about some masalih benefits. And through that you'll be able to bring about what? Uh, the repelling of evil. The ability to repel evil. So what is it my beloved brothers and sisters that one should start his da'wah with? Let's read Surah Al-Luqman from Ayah 13 to Ayah 18. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانُ لِبْنِهِ وَهُوَ يَعِذُهُ يَا بُنَيَّ لَا تُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ وَهْنًا عَلَى وَهْنٍ وَفِصَالُهُ فِي عَامَيْنٍ حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ وَهْنًا عَلَى وَهْنٍ وَفِصَالُهُ فِي عَيْمَيْنِ أَنِ اشْكُرْ لِي وَلِوَالِدَيْكَ إِلَيَّ الْمَصِيرِ وَإِنْ جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَى أَنْ تُشْرِكَ بِي مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِي عِلْمٌ فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا وَصَاحِبُهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا 
واتبع سبيل من اناب الي ثم الي مرجعكم فانبئكم بما كنتم تعملون يا بني انها ان تك مثقال حبه من خردل فتكون في صخره فتكون في صخره او في السماوات او في الارض يات بها الله ان الله لطيف خبير يا بني اقم الصلاه وامر بالمعروف وانه عن المنكر واصبر على ما اصابك ان ذلك من عزم الامور ولا تصعر خدك للناس ولا تمشي في الارض مرحا ان الله لا يحب كل مختال فخور وقصد في مشيك واغضض من صوتك ان انكر الاصوات لصوت الحمير الله سيد وإذ قال أن when he said لقمان said لبنيه to his son يا بني يا my son so لقمان is a man who Allah سبحانه وتعالى he is a رجل صالح a noble man he was a wise individual Allah referred to him as a what حكيم wise the reason why he was wise is because حكمة means وضع الشيء في موضعه it is to place something in its place. He knew how to order his da'wah. He knew what to start with. He knew how the sequence of da'wah should be. He was wise, smart. He knew what the fundamental problem was in the community. So he advised his own son. A father advising his son will always be the most important things. He said, Ya Bunaya, my son, La tushrik billah. The first thing he advised him is, My son, don't associate partners with Allah. Inna shirka, for verily shirk, la zulmun azim. It is the greatest form of oppression. It is the greatest form of what? It is the greatest form of oppression. So he started with that. Then he said, وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ وَهْنًا عَلَى وَهْنًا And then he advised him about his parents his father and his mother but he started with the mother first he was wise he knew the mother was more important than the father he said my son your father your mother she gave birth to you through weakness wahn means weak she went through da'af nine months she struggled and she gave birth to you and she brought you to this world and then it took her another two years to breastfeed you to look after you she lost her sleep she lost her sleep a children came to their mom once and they said, Mom, can you tell us how it is when you are raising us? She said, Inshallah ta'ala, I will. The kids went to sleep at night and then she woke them all up. And they said, Mom, in the middle of the night. And she said, why did you wake me? They said to their mom, why did you wake us up, Mom? She said, because I lost one of my socks. Where was it? I lost one of my socks. Do you know where it is? In other words, that's what you guys used to wake me up for. That's what you would say to me. You would wake me up for silly things. So she showed them what it meant as a mother. So that was the first thing. Weakness she went through. وَفِصَالُهُ فِي عَامَيْنِ And then the breastfeeding, which is another two years. And اشْكُرْ لِي وَلِوَالِدَيْكِ Show gratitude to Allah first by his children. And then show gratitude to who? Your parents. They gave you this life that you're living today. They brought you to this world. وَإِنْ جَاهَدَكَ If they both strive, your parents. عَلَىٰ أَنْ تُشِكَ بِي Since your parents' station is high and it's big. But if they strive and they put so much effort in making you become a disbeliever, then don't listen to them. فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا If they say to you, do shirk, don't listen to them. But Allah said to you, فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا Don't obey them. But that doesn't still mean you disconnect them. So Allah has reminded you, وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا But befriend them still. 
Keep that ties of kinship with them in good. Your mother is not a Muslim. She's calling you to shirk. She's telling you to associate partners with Allah. She's telling you to come to kufr. Allah said to you, be patient with them. Don't obey them. But be friends with them. If she has problems, help her, financial problems. If she needs, help her. This is the advice that he gave. And then he said, My son, follow the path of those who repent. In other words, be with those who are righteous. Befriend the righteous people. Take the path of those who repent. And also, that your final abode is going to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everybody's going to go back to Allah. And everybody's going to be accounted for everything that they said and that they did the day of judgment. Ya Bunaya, my children, my son, innaha in taku mithqala habbatin min khardalin, fatakun fi sakharatin aw fi samawati aw fi al-ardi, ya'ti biha Allah. My children, if a mustard seed, as small as a mustard seed, something as small as an atom, which is fi sakhara and under a rock, it's hidden. Whether that rock is on the samawat or it's on the earth, it doesn't matter where it is. Ya'ti biha Allah, Allah is going to bring that day. Allah is going to bring it the day of judgment. Allah is going to be what? It's like the qawlu ta'ala, وَمَا تَكُونُوا فِي شَأْنٍ وَمَا تَتْلُوا مِنْهُ مِنْ قُرْآنٍ وَلَا تَعْمَلُونَ مِنْ عَمَلٍ إِلَّا كُنَّا عَلَيْكُمْ شُهُودًا إِذْ تُفِيضُونَ فِيهِ وَمَا يَعْزُبُ عَنْ رَبِّكَ مِنْ مِثْقَالِ ذَرَّةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي السَّمَاءِ Nothing is hidden from him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything he will bring in the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As he said in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ وَلَا عَلَمُ مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ إِذْ يَتَلَقَّ الْمُتَلَقِّيَانِ عَنِ الْيَمِينِ وَعَنِ الشِّمَالِ قَعِيدِ مَا يَلْفِذُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ مَا يَلْفِذُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ Everything that you say, every statement that you utter, every speech that comes out of your mind and your heart, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of it. Then he said, يَا بُنَيَّ مَا يَسَانْ أَقِمِ الصَّلَاةِ Establish the prayer. وَأَمُرُ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ And call to the good. وَنْهَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ And prohibit the evil. وَاصْبِرْ And be patient عَلَى مَا أَصَابَكَ Be patient on the harms that you are afflicted with. إِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ That is from the most. That is from the strongest and the greatest of affairs. وَلَا تُصَعِرْ خَدَّكَ لِلنَّاسِ وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَا My son, stay away from arrogance. And belittling others. Ignoring other people. And don't walk on this earth in a state of arrogance. Like we see youngsters walking nowadays. The trousers are sagging. They're walking the way they're walking on the street. Don't walk like that. In another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says that you're walking and the way that you're walking like this, you're not going to be able to crack this earth and you're not able to get as far and as tall as a mountain. You're a small creation of Allah, weak. Huh? You're not the way you're walking, you're not going to crack this earth, are you? Is that how strong you are? You know, you're weak. If you fall down and you hit your face on the floor, you're, you faint. You'll be out for hours. So calm down. Allah doesn't want like the person who's arrogant and full of himself. And then he said, be balanced and moderate in your, in your walking. وَغْضُضْ مِنْ صَوْتِكَ And when you shout and scream and your volume goes up, be moderate, don't scream. You find sisters shouting to another sister on the other side of the street. إِنَّ أَنْكَرَ الْأَصْوَأْتِ لَصَوْتُ الْحَمِيرِ The most rejected voices to Allah is the voice of the donkey. The donkey, have you seen how he shouts? Some people, they scream like that when they get angry. The sister shouts at her brother. She, ah, oh. Screaming. The wife gets angry at her husband. She screams the way she screams. That's not a good characteristics. So this is an advice of Nabi, uh, the advice of Luqman to his son. This is how da'wah should be done. This is it. Look, where, where did he start talking about etiquette and manners? At the ending. He made that the last point. He even spoke about a tawheed. Are you with me? He talked about tawheed to his son first, nothing before it. And that is the job of every prophet. That is the job of every righteous person. 
That is the job of every da'i. That's awlawiyatu fi da'wati ila Allah ta'ala. That is the manner in which da'wah should be done. In that order. When you start doing that da'wah like that, what did we say before? Tawheed is against what? It's against the desires. Since you're fighting people's desires, are they going to like you? No. That's why prophets never had friends. Little did they have friends. Little friends did they have. The overwhelming majority of people were against them. Why were they against them for? Because a person is fighting and he's blasting your desires. It's not something you're going to agree with. It's not something you're going to agree with. And it's not something you're easily going to surrender to because your nafs is inclined to it. وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِالسُّوءٍ Nafs is going to call you to what? To evil. That's what Allah said to the Prophet. مَا يُقَالُ لَكَ إِلَّا مَا قَدْ قِيلَ لِلرُّسُلِ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ Muhammad, it has not been said about you except that which the prophets who came before you were said about. What is being said to you is exactly what's being said about the prophets who came before you. إِنَّ رَبَّكَ لَذُو مَغْفِرَةٍ وَذُو عِقَابٍ أَلِيمٍ your Lord Allah is one who is forgiving and is one who is severe in his punishment. Also Allah said to the Prophet, فَاسْتَقِمْ be steadfast كَمَا أُمِرْتَ as you were commanded. What is it that he has to be steadfast on? He has to be steadfast on the da'wah that he calls the people to. And how he's going to give his da'wah. He needs to be steadfast on that. وَمَنْ تَابَ مَعَكَ وَلَا تَطْقَوْ إِنَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ الْقَاعِدَةُ السَّابِعَةُ Before I go into the seventh qa'idah, let's compare and just quickly look at the da'wah of one man and the da'wah of many who came after him or even those who were before him. Let's take for example, Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab. You guys know him, right? What happened to his da'wah? His da'wah stands today. One of the strongest da'wahs that are, that are carrying on. Are you with me? Why has his da'wah bad fruits? What's the reason why his da'wah bad fruits? And why is the da'wah of many who came didn't bear any fruits? And they came and they died. And they did not change anything. And they left their community probably worse in a worse situation than when they came. The reason is because they did not give importance to that which Allah gave importance to. And they didn't give importance to what, that which the righteous, the righteous people gave importance to. And that is what? At Tawheed. And Inkaru Shirk, rejecting Shirk. So that's why their da'wah gave a lot. And they benefited those people around them. Today, in London, 2017, in Southall, the Shaykh's name is being mentioned. He was of a different time, he was of a different country, he's of a different region, he's of a different background, he's of a different language of what we're speaking right now, with all of that in place, because he started with what the Prophet started with, he's not, his da'wah has not only become, his da'wah has not only become spread around the world, rather government, a government stands on his da'wah. It's built, the constitution that's written on that da'wah of the government is the da'wah of Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab. And where did Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab take it from? He took it from who? Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah and Shaykh al Islam ibn al Qayyim because they called to Tawheed. Look at those who came before ibn Taymiyyah. Where is their da'wah? Are they as powerful as ibn Taymiyyah and others? La. These, these ones, their da'wah got spread. Because they started with what was most important and they educated the people based on that. Al Qaida to Sabi'ah, the seventh Qaida. The seventh Qaida is Anahum Yu Avimuna Jamia Umuri Deen. They honor all of the matters pertaining to the religion. Every matter that's in the religion, they honor it. فَيَدْعُونَ إِلَى مَا دَعَى إِلَيْهِ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ قَدَّرَ الْإِسْتِطَاعَةِ And they call 
the people to that which the Prophet called to according to their ability. But everything within Islam for them is something that they give importance to. Within the importance there are of levels, right? What's the most important? At-Tawheed and Aqeedah, right? That doesn't mean though that they dismiss, they dismiss well good manners. No, it doesn't mean that. No, it doesn't mean that. Are you with me, brothers? It doesn't mean that. The whole religion for them, anything that has come from the Quran and the Sunnah, for them it is something they honor, they respect it. That's why Allah said in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu, those of you who believe, udkhulu fi silmi kafa, enter into the religion wholeheartedly, completely. Don't take part of the deen. Afatu'minuna bi ba'd al kitabi wa takfuruna bi ba'd. Are you going to believe in some of the Quran? Are you going to take some of the Sunnah? And are you going to reject the others? No. Well, some people, what they've done is they've given a lot of importance to Tawheed al Aqeedah, which is good, which is what's needed. But guess what happened to them? They gave no importance to manners, they gave no importance to Fada'il al A'mal, the righteous deeds. They gave no importance to heart softening. They, so they only chose part of the deen. That's another problem. Another group of people, they only gave importance to what? What did they give importance to? Heart softening. Fada'il a'mal. Righteous actions. And what did they leave? And what did they leave? They left off aqeedah. And that is a harmful situation. And that is a harmful situation. So the religion, you have to take it wholeheartedly. What is most important is Tawheed and Aqeedah. And then second, and third, and fourth, you put it in order as how the Sharia did. Ibn Kathir rahimahullah said regarding this ayah, Ya ayya ladina amanu dukhulu fi silmi kafa. Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah 208. He said, Yaqulu Allah, Allah says, Amuran. عِبَادَهُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ الْمُصَدِّقِينَ بِرَسُولِهِ Allah commanded the believing slaves of His who believe in the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم أن يأخذوا بجميع عرى الإسلام that they take all of the branches of Islam and its legislations وشرائعه والعمل بجميع عوامره and, they, they, and that they also implement in accordance to all of the commands وترك and that they leave off they also leave off all of the things which it prohibits us from. مَسْتَطَاعُوا مِنْ ذَلِكَ As much as they are able to. قَالَ مُجَاهِدْ ibn Jabrin said أَيْ اِعْمَلُوا Do بِجَمِيعِ الْأَعْمَالِ وَوُجُوهِ الْبِرِّ Do all of righteous deeds. And the, uh, do all good, all actions and righteous deeds. Do all actions and righteous deeds. So that's, this is what they do. And what happened, my beloved brothers and sisters, is that to show you that things that the people belittle, that they don't honor, that they don't see how serious it is, is the matters pertaining to straightening the lines in the salah. Coming to the masjid, straightening the lines. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa he said in the hadith of Nu'man ibn Bashir radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated by Bukhari and Muslim. That the Prophet said, Ibad Allah, the slaves of Allah, let to sawna sufufakum. You will straighten the lines and you will straighten the lines and you will straighten the lines. O liyukhalifanna Allahu bayna qulubikum. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring differences in your hearts towards one another. Meaning you will have hate and enmity towards one another. Because the, line, the lines are not being straightened. The lines are not. The lines are not being straightened. And the people are not straightening the, the lines. So it is important and it is necessary and it's obligatory that a person realizes that just not by straightening the lines. People are not talking to each other. People are opposing one another. In other words, this is the significance of holding on to the sunnah is what unites the people. Holding on to the sunnah is what unites the people.
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, ذَلِكَ وَمَنْ يُعَظِّمْ وَمَنْ يُعَظِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ And anyone who honors the symbols of Islam, then this is from the piety of the heart. So the, this qa'idah is teaching us honoring all of the matters of the religion. Every legislation in the religion, you honor it, you respect it. And you try to call, call towards it as much as you're able to. And you try to implement it as much as you're able to. Salman al-Farisi radiallahu ta'ala anhu, a man came up to him. He said to him, قَدْ عَلَّمَكُمْ نَبِيُّكُمْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَتَّى الْخِرَاءَةِ Your Prophet and he came, your Prophet came Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to you guys. And he called you to everything, and he taught you everything, even how to do the call of nature. Salman al-Farisi radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he responded by saying, Ajal, no. The Prophet came to us and he taught us, alayhi salatu wasalam, how to do call of nature. Meaning our Prophet never belittled anything. Hatta even when we go to the toilet, what we, what we need to do. How to clean ourselves when we're in the toilet. Our religion has covered everything. Because this religion is, to, is come to what? It has come to explain everything that we need. It has come to explain everything that we, that we need. القاعدة الثامنة the eighth قاعدة قاعدة الثامنة is أنهم لا يعارضون النصوص بعقولهم ولا بأهوائهم ولا بأذواقهم they do not oppose the textual evidences they don't go against the kitab and the sunnah they don't go against it with what? بعقولهم their logics and their rationality their brain and they don't oppose it because of their whims and desires. And they don't oppose it based on their dhouq. Dhouq here is what? Huh? Tastes and you know, dhouq is used by the uh, uh, Sufiya. The Sufiya they say we feel, we feel this. Huh? The uqul is used by the Mu'tazila. Huh? The hawa, the desires, is used by the general mass. وَلَا بِقَوْلِ رِجَالٍ مِنْ مِثْرِهِمْ And they don't also oppose it with what? The view of a person. Again, these are the muta'asibin, the fanatic people, the tamadhub. Those who are fanatic in following the madhab. Ahlul sunnah wal jama'ah don't oppose the nusus with what? With their logic. They don't oppose it with their desires. They don't go against it based on their senses. Oh, I said this verse is wrong. None of that. Fourth is that they don't oppose it based on a statement of somebody. Or oh, Sheikh said, Sheikh so and so said, none of those four Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah oppose the Quran and the Sunnah with. Because Allah said in the Quran, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ It is not for a believing man or woman. لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ If Allah and His Messenger have passed a decision on a matter, Okay, and he's made a final ruling on a matter. Okay, it is no right anyone has whatsoever to oppose it. No one can come and then oppose it. Okay, وَمَنْ يَعْصِ اللَّهَ Anyone who opposes Allah, وَرَسُولَهُ and his messenger, فَقَدْ ضَلَّ ضَلَالًا مُبِينًا And this person has become misguided, a click of misguidance. Allah also says, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتَ وَيُسَلِّمُ تَسْلِيمًا Allah says, for they are not true believers. Until they make you their judge. Until they make you Muhammad, their judge. The disputes that happen between them, the disputes that happen, the disputes that happen between them, they are not true believers unless they make you their judge. ثُمَّ لَا تَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِمْ And they don't find it in themselves. After you've passed the judgment, حرج, and they don't find any hate or enmity towards it. Harajan mimma qadayta, the judgment that you have passed. Wa yusallimu tasliman, and they surrender to it. Allah also says, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ And He said to them, تَعَالَوْ كَمْ إِلَى مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ Come to that which Allah has sent down. وَإِلَى الرَّسُولِ And come to what the Prophet ﷺ has come with. رَأَيْتَ الْمُنَافِقِينَ You see the hypocrites. يَصُدُّونَ عَنْكَ صُدُودَ You see that the hypocrites, they turn around, they turning around. They don't want to take the Quran or the Sunnah. They'll find excuses. 
Allah referred to these people as hypocrites. So when you say to them, come, Allah said, come, the messenger said, Allah says, Ra'ayta al-munafiqeena, you find the hypocrites. Yasudduna anka sududa, they turn away a turning. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As, radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma, he said, I heard the Prophet ﷺ say, Inna Allah la yanzi'u al-ilma intiza'an yantazi'uhu. Allah does not remove knowledge of removing that he removes. Walakin yantazi'uhu. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he removes the knowledge. Ma'aqabdi al-ulama'i by taking the scholars. By taking the scholars. Fayabqa unasun juhal. So when the scholars die, who is left? Scholars are dying. They're going, what's going to be left? The ignorant ones are going to be left. You stuff tona, then the ignorant ones are asked questions. They are asked a question. Fayuftun, and they give a fatwa based on the question. Fayuftun bi ra'ihim, they give verdicts based upon what? Uh, based on their own opinions. Fayudilluna wa yadillun. They misguide themselves and they misguide others. So where are they basing their views on? Where are they extracting the evidences from? Where are they extracting the evidence from? Their own? Their own? Their own opinion. So they're going to misguide themselves and they're misguiding others. Ali ibn Abi Talib he said, لَوْ كَانَ الدِّينُ بِالرَّأْيِ لَكَانَ أَسْفَلُ الْخُفِّ أَوْلَى بِالْمَسْحِ مِنْ أَعْلَى رَوْهُ أَبُوْ دَاوُدْ Ali ibn Abi Talib said, if the religion was based on opinions, if the religion was about opinions, then he said it would have been more correct to wipe over the bottom part of the leg of, of the mas of the khufain, the socks, than on the top. Sah? Because the bottom is where you walk on. Why are you wiping over the top part? But because it's a religion and you have to take it, it's not about what, what logic. This is important. The people Ibn al-Qayyim mentions that oppose the revelation are five. The first ones are Ta'ifatun aradatu bi'uqulihim fil khabariyat. The first ones are the one who oppose the textual evidence based on their logic. Waqaddamat alayhi al-aql. They gave the logic and the rational, rationality a precedence. So they said to the people, they say to the people, Lana al-aql wa lakum al-naql. We have the aql, you guys have the text. The second one are Ta'ifatun aradatu bi ara'im wa qiyasatihim And the other ones are who have opposed They opposed the Kitab and the Sunnah based upon analogy 